this video, I'll be talking about the 3D view. The 3D view is a little bit more complex than the 2D view, so I'll help you navigate the scene, set up different models, use your different materials, and in general, know your way around the different menus in here. So the first thing to show you is how to navigate. It's quite simple. First of all, make sure that you're on the camera modus here. Then you can use your left mouse button to spin your object around and to rotate the camera. You can use your middle mouse button to pan the camera, or you can do control right mouse button. And finally, you can use your scroll wheel or simply drag up and down with the right mouse button to zoom in and out. If you ever lose track of your view or you get zoomed into a weird angle such as this, you can always use the hotkey F to focus and bring things back into view. It's similar to what we did in the 2D view and the graph. Additionally, in the camera menu here, at the fourth little section, there's a few predetermined camera views such as back or perspective that you can use to quickly switch different views. Now, another important thing to know is to set up different models inside the 3D view here. At the top, we have the first section with simple primitives such as cube, cylinder, plane and sphere. And in the second part, we have the more advanced models such as this matte ball, which you might recognize from Substance Painter. Additionally, if you would like to use your own mesh, you'll have to link it into your package first. I've brought one in here. Remember, this is through right-clicking your package, selecting Link and 3D Mesh. Once your mesh is linked as a resource, you simply double-click it, wait for it to load. This one is fairly heavy. And then once it shows up, you can navigate it just as before. Once you have a mesh loaded up, it might make sense at times to use this little scene browser which shows you a setup of the hierarchy of your model and you can use this to change the different materials that are assigned to all the different objects inside your mesh. This is fairly advanced so we're going to jump back to the rounded cube. I'll show you a few more things relating to that and once you've done that you see we've switched back from the model to the rounded cube. Our material is gone and straight away I can use that to show you how to get materials to show up in the 3D view. That's probably one of the things people get most confused by. The simplest way is to right click an empty area and to select view outputs in 3D view. That is the seventh entry, this, uh, sorry, the sixth entry in the menu here. If you click that, it should automatically send all the predefined outputs into your 3D view here. Additionally, you can right click on a node and you can do two different things. If you select view in 3D view, it will send all the different outputs. And in this case, that is a material. See here, it has all the outputs defined. Or you can right click on a simpler node, say view in 3D view, and it'll ask you what channel you want to send it to. So I can send this, this to the base color or diffuse like that. You can always reset that back to saying view outputs in 3D view, and it goes back to the standard material display. Now, what's important to understand is that the materials menu here is a list of different material slots assigned to your mesh. All the objects that are predefined have only one material that's named default. So in this list here, we can choose the default material, and then you can choose different definitions. You should see these as shader files or um, material definitions, such as here, we can choose a parallax occlusion or tessellation. We can switch to the specular glossiness method. And if we click the edit with the little cog next to it, the properties view here changes and shows you some of the special properties related to the material. So setting up the textures happens through interaction with the graph. Changing the shader happens through interaction with the materials menu here. You can also see what channels the shader supports by going into the entry for that shader and then opening up the channels menu, you get a list. You can toggle them off individually as well, such as if I do this, you can toggle off your base color. I'll toggle it back on like that. If you have a mesh such as this one here, then you'll see that I have a few different entries in the list here. So this means that if I send something to view in 3D view, it will ask me what specific entry to send it to. So this allows me to view it only on the body. If I'd like to see another material elsewhere, I can say view in 3D view, see that on the wings. So like this, I can set up different materials for different parts of the mesh. It allows me to, uh, to manage things. Now, to show you again how you can use this uh, materials menu, let me jump back and choose the plain high res. 
view my outputs in 3D view, and I've got a height channel defined here, and I'd like to see that as a tessellated displacement. So I'll go into my materials, definitions, and I'll choose the tessellation method. Once I choose a different method, the properties change instantly, and I'll increase the scale as well as the tessellation factor. And then you can see straight away, and this isn't necessarily a uh, good example, straight away you can see that my mesh is being displaced. So remember, if you want to set up specific settings, change the definition and make sure you go far enough to change the method as well. Let me reset that. There we go, reset. And we'll view our outputs in 3D view again to reset things again. Then to modify the rendering, We've got the lights here, and the lights don't generally tend to do very much. There are lights here. We can click Edit, and it shows me a uh, list of point lights and an ambient light. And I can enable these, but they tend to be fairly faint and don't do very much. So with this, you can move it around and actually makes more sense to choose a sphere for that. Move the camera around like so. And you'll see that at a specific point, we get our point light to show up there. It's fairly faint. So again, we can say edit and we can increase the intensity to make it much brighter. There we go. So this allows you to switch between camera and point light uh, mode where you can move them around. Now the lights aren't used very often. That is because instead the uh, viewport here uses the environment. So the environment, if I click that, is a HDR or a cube map that's being used. I can toggle it on and off through the environment menu. If I click edit, such as with most of the menus, I can toggle it to be shown in the background. With the exposure, I can change the uh, brightness of the background. And then with the rotation angle, you can rotate it around. Now you can also use the hotkey control shift and the right mouse button. So control shift with the right mouse button rotates the environment around as well. So we'll turn this back off. If you'd like to use a different environment, go to the library, find the 3D view section, click environment maps, scroll through until you find one that you like. Let's pick the uh, small apartment here, drop it on and instantly a different 3D view uh, environment is being loaded. Right now, my 3D viewport is rendering with the OpenGL real-time shaders, but all the way at the right here, there's a menu for renderer, and you can switch to iRay here as well, which, which, which switches to NVIDIA iRay, which does some really realistic rendering. It does tend to be quite a bit slower, so I tend not to use this while I'm working on a graph. My computer really tends to run a lot uh, warmer and louder that way, so I'll switch back to OpenGL. But if you use iRay, there's quite a few settings you can set up here. You can even change it to render on a... Um, uh, server on clusters. If I click edit here, you get a few extra settings for iRay. I'll go back to OpenGL as well. If you've got a uh, nicely set up viewport here, there's a few things you can do. In the camera menu, you can save your viewport image, you can copy it to clipboard, or you can save the render out as well. And alternatively, and this could be interesting as well, because the 3D scenes are fairly volatile, that means you close Designer, you close the package, you open them back up and the 3D scene is reset, you can save the state of your 3D viewports as a resource. So you can say create 3D resource from current scene. And so we'll save it in the resources folder, click OK, just name it like that. And that will instantly reload the state that we have right here, just as we had it before. So if I double click, for example, on this mesh, and then double click on the sphere again, it goes back to exactly the same state as it was before. So this can be useful for keeping the setup that you have of your 3D scene. That's it for this video about the 3D view. See you in the next one.